Please pause the video and try the problem on your own. See what you can do with it. Let's start by reading the problem together. It says Crystal was given $3,000 when she turned two years old. So, right, I'm going to write this down in green, deal with money here. She's given $3,000 when she was two years old. So this is our starting amount, right? You might call that your principal balance, right? Principal balance. I always forget how to spell principal, if it's A-L or E-L. And this number is going to be important here. Her parents invested it at a 2% interest rate, rate compounded annually. That means that, so in the first year, right, we have $3,000 plus 2%, which is 0 0.02 of 3,000. Right, that's our, that's our first year, so year one. And then year two, what's going to happen? Well, that whole amount, right, 3,000 plus 0 0.02 of 3,000, that was what we made the first year. That whole amount, right, we're going to add another 0.2% on that amount, which is, well, I'll copy and paste it. Another 0.2% on this right here. Right, so we're out of room there. Okay, so th this is the expression just for two years. And you can imagine that from this perspective, uh, compounding can be very confusing, but we'll simplify this in a much easier way. Um, so let's go back to this. What do they want to know? Before we start to really get into the heart of this, let's write this thing out. Let's figure out what they're asking, excuse me. No deposits or withdrawals are made. So deposits are when you put money into an account, and withdrawals are when you take money out of an account. Which expression can be used to determine how much money Crystal had in the account when she turned 18? So here, if we look at, um, this, you know, it's not, if we look at the, all the choices here, we, we have to step back and think, okay, we're dealing with exponential form. And the general form of an equation in exponential form is y equals, well, I'll say, sorry, I'll say it this way, the principal balance, you can call it p sub 0, times a to the x power. So this is going to be your starting point, the principal balance. a is going to be the interest rates compounding or the base in general. And x, in this case, can be a time interval, right? So here, we already know the starting balance. So we know that the form of this equation is going to have to equal y equals 3,000 times a to the x power. And we also know we're looking at 18 years. Now she was two years old when this thing started. So that means 16 years will have gone by, right, until she's 18, from 2 to 18 is 16. So we know already that's going to be 3,000 times some rate to the 16th power. So that means we could, of course, if we look at our choices here, we can cross these two out because they're both to the 18th power. And here, if you look at the two remaining choices, it clearly has to be the first one because they're adding a percentage, right, each year, not taking away. This would be a decay function. Choice two, this would be a rate of decay. If this number, 1 minus 0.02, if the base, that number right there, is less than 1, you have what's called a decay function because you're losing value over time. Here, you're gaining value over time, so it's called a growth function. Um, with that being said, uh, let's just step back to make sense of why this equation actually makes sense. So here's another way to think about what's going on here with the account. So we have time and we have, let's say, money. And let's call zero time the starting point. That's what we have 3,000. And then let's go through the first two years and then we'll generalize to the X year. So I want you to have a deeper understanding of this problem so you're ready for anything they, that they could ask you. After one year, we did say that it could be thought of as 3,000 plus 0 0.02 of 3,000. But the really, I think, awesome observation to make is that you can condense these two terms. 3,000 is just one group of 3,000. And here, we have 0 0.02 groups of 3,000. So just like if we, th if we think of 3,000, let's say, as x, right? Then this could be thought of as 1x plus 0 0.02x. And from lots of experienced algebra, you know you could just add the coefficients here. So this equals 1.02x. So here that means it equals 1.02 times 3,000. And this is where you begin to really understand um, the general structure of the exponential equation. Let me clear this off. Clear this off. Okay. So that means that we can represent this in a really neat way. Because the next year, instead of that long, confusing... Uh, expression we had before. 
we could say, all right, well, in the second year, we'll have another 1.02 times what we had in the first year. So times 1.02 times 3,000. And, and what we begin to see is that, oh, after two years, we multiply by 1.02 twice. One year, we multiply it by 1.02 once. And then the first year, we didn't multiply by 1.02, but we could think of it as, I move this over, 1.02 to the zero power. Because if you remember, um, 1.02 to the zero power, that would just equal one. So that would be one times 3,000. So if we recap this, right, we notice that there's a matching between the interest rate and the years, especially in the sense that the exponent, zero, matches the timestamp of zero. Here, the exponent of one matches the first year. And here, we would have an exponent of two. If we condense this, it would be 1.02 squared, right, times 3,000. And then our exponent of two matches the years. So in general, if you're looking at x years, it's 1.02 to the x right, times 3,000, and this is commutative, so we could write it as 3,000, the starting balance, times 1.02 to the x. Now here, they just write, they, they decompose this, they write 1 plus 0 0.02, same thing. So here, there's a little bit of background, um, it's a repeated multiplication of an interest rate that's compounding your interest over time. All right, hope this helped.